is Florida State going to be getting some help with the grant of rights? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith, and today we are going to tackle the ever-so-popular grant of rights discussion. Got a really good guest coming on, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Please check out everything they have on their app. Today's episode is also going to be an opportunity for you to get $20 off Locked On College for your first purchase. Thank you very much for that. But right now, this is the fun stuff. Mr. Isaac Shade. Um, look, man, we, we <laughs> talked about this off air a second ago. I have open-endedly avoided this like the plague, man. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's not a fun topic because it's lawyer stuff. I've taken law classes. I don't enjoy them. <laughs> you cover university of North Carolina for locked on Tar Heels. You're a lifelong Carolina guy. You do locked on college basketball. So you've got different ways to look at this. So the first thing when Florida State first announced it was suing, just to get the basics out of the way, were you surprised? And B, are you surprised with where this is going? Because mm. you live in Georgia, but like you cover UNC, so you hear a little bit of everything. Like, where do you think this stands like in your mind? Are you surprised by anything at all? It's a great question. It, it's funny, Brian. I remember where I was because uh, when the news broke about Florida State suing and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like <laughs> it, it really excited me, if I'm being honest, um, because it was like this whole thing where I feel like the ACC has been so smug about this whole thing. It feels like, you know, or it's like this is so ironclad and you jokers and you jokers, good luck with it. And everyone's go, you know, everyone has to go to the Mecca to, to view the grant rights and see if they can find loop and this whole thing. And so I was like, who, who is it going to be? Who's going to be the one that takes the leap first um, to really push back on this thing? And what is that move going to be? I think I thought all along that it would probably be the Seminoles or Clemson because of it being a football first facing thing, right? Like if it, if basketball was the one that led the way, I would have guessed it would have been North Carolina probably that, but, but my assumption all along, what it was, was that it would be you guys or Clemson. And so when it happened and it, it was coming in the form of suing, the conference, dude, I, I just, I just, as a Braves fan, I, I got in on it and I just started tomahawk chopping right then and there, man. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's ironic because like, I know eventually there's going to be a settlement and a friend of mine, uh, Bud Elliott, who's Florida state guy, but works for two, four, seven CFS sports is actually a warrior. And he's talking about it on their, their podcast and all this stuff. And, He's like, look, the judge even basically was trying to hint, hey, why don't you all just figure this out and sign some agreements here? Mm -hmm. But they like the smug part, and they're so angry at each other. I think it's more of a we got you moment, which is dumb. That's not how law works. Neither one is going to get a I got you because they're two big entities. Courtroom will do anything they can not to have that to see somebody depanced. And it is an agreement they did openly sign through 2036. That's right. That's at the end right. of the day, they – we didn't hold a gun to your head. This is not, you know, a mob movie. So I'm just curious about it. But my guess is sometime in the next five years, Florida State and Clemson, bare minimum, will not be a part of the conference, which brings in the next part. Before I brought you on today, I'd made one last ditch to look. Then I saw something that made me really cringe about your Tar Heels and the whole state that we talked about a moment ago before this came on the show. There's some kind of board in the state of North Carolina for public schools. So Duke would be a little different deal. Right. That they have to. Agree. And Wake for that matter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wake is also a private institution. So three out of the four big name schools in East Carolina is public as well. So if they ever try to change that and do it, they have to vote for them to even go out and do it. And then they got to show like a laundry list of reasons. It's like they own them. Yeah. And I'm I hate bureaucracy with every fiber of my being. And this is the definition of it. 
And just give your, I know people don't want to be bored to death, but sure. give me your 10 second information on this because North Carolina and North Carolina State, just start with those. Those are very powerful entities. If they were to join, it would be really hard for the ACC and ESPN, Disney, not to look at it. So what, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, it, what's funny is, Brian, it, it's something that it feels like anytime this North Carolina, like statewide thing is brought up, everyone's just kind of like, ah, I don't know, we'll figure that out. Because it's like the, 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 the ACC side of it has been such a big thing. And then you bring this second layer into it. And it's like, so wait a second. I'm going off camera. You know, it's just like everyone's thinking, okay, so if we want to do this, it's not just about finding the legal loopholes in the ACC grant rights. There is some level of North Carolina, North Carolina state legend. And I don't mean like the Wolfpack and Raleigh. I mean like the state itself um, that we have to get through and, and get this vote on and figure out what that is. And so ultimately like, is, is this the, the, politicians warming their way in do we have to like grease wheels how do we do that where do we go about this and as it often is with politics it's like what what are you getting here what are you trying to make happen what would you block or what would you let through and and what constituency benefits or doesn't benefit from you blocking this and so that that's Brian, where it's really almost confusing to me because it's like, what are the the underlying motivations with that side of things? Well, I I, I just said it to you before the show, and I'm going to say it now. And I, I am a total glass half empty guy. I'm the opposite of you. <laughs> I always worry about people being influenced through money on that committee. Yeah. Straight up. Yep. Or other types of leaning on them. If you don't help us do this or if you don't stop them from doing this and it's just all about collusion and bribery and the whole nine yards that everybody will deny, even if it's live on camera, you know, because people today aren't real honest, uh, especially <laughs> in the world of sport, as you and I both know. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, the Gosh. Olympic Committee comes to mind, but that's like the worst yes, thing exactly. ever. And so, and so I think kind of to your point there, Brian, what it feels like is if it could be shown like, hey, us getting out of the ACC and getting to the SEC or Big East, Big Ten, excuse me, or whatever it is, if that helps out the state and brings in more money and those kind of things, it's like, okay, let's do it. You know? So it's just like, what, what's it going to take to make you okay with doing what we need to do? Well, that's, that's an ugly way to look at it, but it's just, what's it going to take? Ugh, that, yep. Those words are very <laughs> awkward. Those are very, very awkward words based on what I just, just brought in. Uh, coming up next, I want to talk about your own opinions on it and, how I'm just curious again, you cover the Tar Heels, how yeah. they could play a role or not, and what you think Florida State should or should not do as far as a conference. Because this is this is the other debate with it. If they do get out, where the hell are they going? Yeah. I mean, why would a school, you know, the culture and all that? There's there's a lot of a lot of things to go with that. So we're gonna talk about that next on Locked On Tar Heels right after this. All right. If you're going to have an opportunity to buy tickets and you, especially if you need something last minute, I highly recommend the game time app. It's a great app that I have used. You can see your seats right from the app. After a couple clicks, type in North Carolina Tar Heels, type in Florida state Seminoles, type in New York Mets, Atlanta Braves, whatever it is. And you can do it. They've got zone deals. They've got last minute ticket pricing and it's really easy. Obviously, Isaac's a big fan of the Braves. I'm sure getting Braves tickets is not the easiest thing. They are a very good major league franchise, but that's another opportunity too. They got anything you can imagine, tickets for all kinds of things, tickets for concerts, tickets for opportunities with opera, you name it. So go with that. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, Isaac, let's talk about this from the perspective of. What would you do if you were Florida State and you got out? Just open-endedly, would you rather be the school that sets the market? They'd probably get more money from the Big Ten because the Big Ten wants to expand into Florida. They're not even – they don't even hide it. <laughs> but culturally, because I know North Florida, like, and I'm sure you're familiar – culturally, the Big Ten and Florida State have about as much in common 
as the United States in the Middle East. I mean, it's, that's maybe a little extreme, but like culturally, it's a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. What, and how do so, you do that? And, and even geographically, right? Like, which to that ex to that <laughs> point, Ten. it makes sense for the Big Ten to try to get into that Florida footprint for recruiting and everything else. But yeah, I, I'm with you, Brian, because the SEC just makes so much more sense from a Hey, let's have uh, geographically from a, Hey, let's have, we've got two Georgia schools. We've got two Alabama schools. Let's have two Florida schools. You know, there's just stuff like that. That just seems to make a lot of sense for the sec. Um, and, but this conference that we're still part of Brian, like if, if they were able to make, I, I don't want to say amends. Cause I don't think that's a thing that's going to happen, but, <laughs> they're if, not <laughs> if if florida state can find a way out of this contract with with the suing and whatever else happens in a way that breaks apart the current grant of rights and in a way that could reestablish something different like if if the conference was able to get something that then rivaled what we have with the the big 10 and the sec and others could follow the same path and just reestablish something because it makes sense for Florida state and Clemson and some of these other schools to, to stay banded together. The problem I think for you guys, I think for Clemson um, is that they're just, I don't think there are other schools that are going to be consistently as high level from a football standpoint as the Seminoles and Tigers are. Do you agree with that? Miami would in the, be the only... Yeah. Miami. Yep. Miami can be, but they've always, in the last 20 years, they found a way to fall in their face too often. They yeah. can be, but they can't. Exactly. Random. And obviously, they're going to be teams that rise up here and there and occasionally, right? But sure. you're going to have more consistent, high level other competition in those other two conferences. It's and, just true. And, and so it's like, which is better? And I think we're going to find that out. As we watch Texas and Oklahoma this year move into the SEC. That's a great point. You know what I mean? And so it's like, would would we rather be consistently the bigger fish in the littler football pond? Or Clemson benefited off that, got two national titles. 100 percent Especially if the ACC could legitimately get into um getting higher payouts for on-field success, right? That I think that stands to benefit both Florida state and Clemson in a massive way. And so it's like, cause really this is about money. This is all about money because the, the, the ACC is going to continue to have, especially with the expansion of the CFP. Now there's going to be the spots. I'm not worried about the ACC getting left out. So to me, if I'm Florida state, it is ultimately does staying in the ACC allow me, allow us as an institution to stay where we need to be financially. If so, I don't know that we need to make a move because we can beat up on all these other little brother teams. What's up, SMU, Stanford, and Cal? Welcome to the party. Um, but but if the money's not going to be there, then we probably got to make a move. That's the big crux, and that was my next question. What's the despair? Like SEC, from what I've read, and I, I go out of my way not to read it, even though it's my job. I hate it. <laughs> They're getting more in the current... 14 team deal that's getting ready to start. It's already changed before it started, by the way, that's not a good sign. Um, I just wonder what the disparity will be in two, three years. So if this court case drags out, especially because the ACC, like I know some of the people watching the show think Florida state's like a title contender this year. They're not, yeah. there's no team in the ACC this year. It's winning the title. There's not Georgia, Ohio state. And Tech, it's going to be one of those three teams. And that's kind of way it is. And there's only so many things. And like Alabama's down a little bit now. LSU's down a little bit. SEC, you better hit right now. Georgia's not going anywhere. That's that job's so easy. It's just, I mean, you live there. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> but at the same time, if they go on another little run here, I mean, Michigan had their one random year that they went at Georgia completely screwed themselves. They should have won it last year, too. If they could demand more like the ACC's number could go down and that could force the hand and, and make it easier. I just wonder if the SEC would really want Florida state and Clemson to the point where they would pay them extra or help them. Like there's so many little sub points to it because 
like I've heard that what is it, $180 million they might be able to get? That's a lot of cash, that's bro. A lot of cash. <laughs> so, and you know, I don't know if they're going to make a huge bid for them, but culturally, again, like especially like Clemson, like that, they have no business in the Big Ten. No, None. no. And and that's where, you know, and I don't know how quickly you want to turn the corner or if at all to North Carolina, but for the Tar Heels, Brian, the Big Ten makes infinitely more sense than does the SEC for a Basketball. multitude of reasons. Yes. First off. So, well, and, and let's say this, though. The SEC is coming up in basketball. They've I mean, done a really nice job. Over the Alabama just years. made the Final Four for the first time ever. I really like Nate Oates as a basketball coach. Tennessee has been uh, pretty consistently at the top of the sport right now. Bruce Pearl's got it rolling at Auburn. I don't know what's about to happen at Kentucky. They just got turned down by Scott Drew on Thursday, so they're going to be searching for a while. But, I mean, it's Kentucky basketball. They're going to find somebody. They're going to land on their feet. It's great. Um, and so – the thing with the Big Ten in North Carolina is that academically, North Carolina hey, profiles for, more as a Big Ten say. institution. It's one of the what, top ten public schools in Absolutely. the United States, I believe. Exactly. And then the other thing is that North Carolina has 28 varsity sports that it supports. The Big S Ten is pretty wide spread, so that would exactly. be a great fit. So the SEC simply doesn't have those in its conference. And so those, if North Carolina, who, by the way, is committed to maintaining those varsity sports, went to okay. the SEC, those sports would either have to go to a different conference or club level. And, and I don't think they want to do that. Whereas the Big Ten literally supports all 28 of those that North Carolina has. And so you, you just look at it that way. And it's like, that makes more sense. And, you know, I mean, it's the same. I, I don't think that these ACC schools, if they do ultimately go elsewhere, have to band together and be together. I mean, it's what we saw with the dismantling of the Pac-12, where they're going off to the Big 12 and Big 10 and whatever else it is. And so um, for North Carolina specifically, I think the Big 10 makes a lot more sense. I've been waiting for somebody to openly say that. And I know a lot of people could care less because <laughs> they just want to watch the football. Back, but that's how these decisions are made. A lot of this stuff, believe it or not, by certain people on the boards and whatnot, there are some academic integrity parts, et cetera. And that's why I also wanted to bring you on because you're an expert on UNC. Basketball there is unbelievable. I grew up in the Michael Jordan era. That's right. <laughs> I'm an Indiana grad. I mean, I remember his last game was against Indiana, ironically. Like, those kind of rivalries would be great. And UNC football still draws pretty good. I don't know what their capacity is, but they get yep. 50,000 fans to yep. a game. Yep. So and I, and I think would love it. And I think Carolina football would be a a middling Big Ten or SEC football team, right? There there would be years where they might the two yeah, games above five hundred. There would be years they would pop if they've got like a Sam Howell or a Drake May, but the defense is still whatever it is. And so you, know, <laughs> you and I talked a lot about that, Brian. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we have. <laughs> we'll see how things are this year with Jeff Collins coming in to run that show, but um. Can't be any worse than Chiswick has done the last two years. I'll say that. Um, but Brian, I, I, I'm, so I think the football is like, yeah, it'll be whatever, you know. And so um, on that side of it, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's too much of a consideration for North Carolina. It's like the football team's going to go where it's going to go, and it's going to be okay. The reason I bring them up, it, I'm sure Florida State and Clemson want them involved because it's a lot easier for them to leverage their own deal. If North Carolina, it'd have to be two. Carolina's not going without at least one of Duke or NC State. What's that's not right. race? That's and I'm right. sure the Big Ten would kill to have Duke, but they get to make their own decision. That's right. Because they're private. I'd assume they would take Wake Forest in some capacity. It'd be another school they could just beat up on, but it's or a great Virginia. academic school. Yeah. Like it's an elite academic institution. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of little things the state of North Carolina have involved. So if you were to guess, is it more likely NC State or UNC that would push more? Like what? Fan base, like, does UNC really care? Yeah. Um, it, what's funny, Brian, remember back, it was Florida State and Clemson and North Carolina and NC State were the four that did right. not want to bring in the two Pac-12 schools and SMU. Who ultimately gave in on that? The Wolfpack. It was NC State that kind of flipped, and that's what allowed those other schools to come in. And ultimately, to me, the single biggest reason to bring those schools in was in the case that anyone else leaves because you got to have a certain number of teams to stay viable, whatever. 
And so NC State, I feel like, is the more likely team to go, which is kind of weird. I think a lot of people assume it would be Duke. Um, but just NC State seems like they're more likely to go. But they also profile to me more as an SEC school than a Big Ten school. So I, it, like, it's just it's hard to wrap your brain around. But but I feel like NC State, part of them ultimately caving in and, and voting in those other three schools is like, we might be sticking around the ACC. Is That's what that says. Because why do you, if you're planning to leave, you say, no, screw it. Don't bring those other schools in and we're out the door anyway. So I, it feels like NC State is more likely, but I, I don't know what they think of themselves. <laughs> like, I think they're looking to cover their bases. So they brought in the three ACC schools. They know, and they're never going to admit this, but if the Big Ten can only take one, which one would they take? They take one, UNC every single every day. time. That's right. It's the bigger moneymaker. It is State U. UNC fans are happy, and UNC State fans are throwing things at their computer at me right now, but it's just true. It's just the way it is. So that that's, that's one thing to think about. All right, here in just a second, we're going to finish up this show. We're going to talk a little bit more about the grant of rights, what's next, and what he thinks of Florida State football in general. Isaac Shade will join us again here in just one second. All right. Today's show is going to also be brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on each and every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic victory. FanDuel. America's number one sports book. All right, Isaac. Um, Florida State has had a really interesting path as a football school. What's <laughs> in this? I mean, like the last 10 years been really turbulent at Florida State. It's bizarre. Uh, the last two or three, they finally kind of figured it out and they're headed in the right direction. A, I'm just curious about what you think. There's been a lot of debate on my show about this. I've told people, I think they could be anywhere from seven and five to 11 and one this year. I have no right. idea with DJ. I don't trust him, but he does have a big arm and I really like Norbell as a play caller. Yeah. First off, just what do you think of Florida state football this year? And like, could you quote unquote, give a number? I think uh, Vegas, most people have them at nine and a half is the over under. I really? think that's a pretty good number. Yeah. I mean, like what, what do you think just in general with DJ coming in, et cetera, there's, yeah. there's some moving parts. You know, I, and that's the interesting thing to me because I really, I'm with you. I like Norvell a lot, Brian. I do too. I, I think he's a good coach. I think that he has a good blend of being player friendly without kowtowing to the player. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a weird balance in this day and age of like, I got to take care of these dudes because if I don't, they're out the door with NIL and transfer portal and all 100%. that. 100%. But I also can't be a pushover because I'm a football coach and they need to respect me and they got to do what I tell them to do. And I, I don't know how these guys do it, but from afar, I really respect the way it seems like he goes about his business. And, um, you know, with without the the injury last year, I mean, I, I hate to even go back to it, but it's like I, it's a whole different conversation now if Florida State had been in the CFP, right? So... <laughs> I, I'm with you. I like DJ. Got to. Does he eventually get to what we think he should be able to get to? What, like, where have you been on that, Brian? Well, it's real simple. It's post snap reads. It's the hardest thing in football. But if you're a quarterback, that's what you're designed to do. And he doesn't do it well enough. I'm hmm. this A to B, brother. Yep. I mean, yep. you can't project. I, I watch more football than anybody on earth, high school to pro, and you cannot project that. Smartest kids I know can't read a defense to save their life. A kid that can't pass algebra two is good at it. There's no rhyme or reason. So, yeah. but he's 6'4, 250, and he's got a rocket launcher. And that's, and that's the thing. It's like all of the intangible physical thing, or not intangible, all of the physical things are there. It's just got to get to it. So, can coaching take care of that? Or is he just somebody that's never going to get there? That's what I can't seem to figure out with him because he's had some moments oh, where yeah. I'm like, you know, like, and so, but anyway, so specifically to what you asked about over under, if it's at nine, um, I'm pulling up the schedule really quick here. 
Georgia Tech, I forgot that's in Ireland. That's a weird game, and they got a good quarterback. Yeah. That game gives me pause. Yeah. First games always give me pause. And then home to BC, and that's like, I mean, I, I know it's not until the next Monday, the but man, coming coming back right after that Ireland game, that's tricky. Memphis at home, Cal at home. Welcome in. Cal SMU back to back. That's hilarious. I hadn't seen that. Um, there you go, brother. So welcome to the new ACC, ladies and gentlemen. Um, hosting Clemson at Duke, which that's different. Now, I'm not as worried about Duke anymore. Uh, after, Riley Leonard's not there. They yeah, to Riley Leonard's not there. The coaching change, um, whatever. Then at Miami, hosting North Carolina. Up to South Bend, Charleston Southern, congrats, and then Florida at home. So, I mean, that that schedule, Brian, I know there's some trickiness at the very beginning with Georgia Tech across the pond, getting back and, you you know, it, it changes how your game prep is ahead of, uh, ahead of BC, but thankfully that's at home. I mean, I feel like you should be able to take care of those. As I look at the schedule, the only tricky-ish games to me are – Obviously, Clemson at home, and then at Duke, at Miami, hosting North Carolina, at Notre Dame. That's an interesting five week stretch, right there, dude. If they have injuries, I'm just concerned. Like, yeah, Florida teams playing in in South Bend in November is no bueno to begin with. Yes. <laughs> like I've lived there, that that's not going to go well. They need to be really healthy for that game. Yeah. So let's say you go into that stretch, Georgia Tech, Boston College, Memphis, Cal, SMU. Let's say you go 5-0 and to start off heading into that 5 stretch. You should, right? Let's say you even, like, to me, worst case scenario, let's say you go 3-2. and two. You're coming out of that stretch at hosting Charleston Southern and then Florida, you host them. So, I mean, I would go over on 9.5. Now, I, I wouldn't go undefeated, but I, 10 feels very doable to me. Well, the, the Miami and Notre Dame games, those are the teams that I think have the best rosters. Clemson's probably third, but they're at home. Yep. And yep. I'm just going to say the same thing because I like taking shots at them because it drives me bananas. I like Dabo as a coach. They will not sniff another national title until they openly and consistently embrace the transfer portal. That's 100% correct. And they're rostered Shout out just, from the mountaintops, my dude. You know, <laughs> it's just. He is just so righteous. It drives me nuts. I can't. Yep. And he's a hell of a coach, but he's just killing he himself. And that's the 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 DJU uh, comeback game. You know, like let's... That, that game for him. I hope he plays well. And, you know and you I mean? worry, just, you yep. would think. Don't get too amped. Stay if he starts yourself. bad, yep. that yep. would be my concern. If he got a pick six in the first quarter, yeah, that, that would be because like Florida State's backups at quarterback, a true freshman and a true sophomore. They're not ready. No. So DJ's got a lot on his plate. I just there's so many pitfalls if he gets banged up. Mm. And Mike's offense really works RPO. And right. DJ's right. just a truck. He's not a guy like I mean the quarterback. Well, we saw last that with, year. Once Jordan got hurt last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Jordan could make guys miss at a phone booth. And he's six three. He's a freak. This guy wants to run through the phone booth, but you can't have his shoulder. I can't, like he's not making guys miss. He's not. Yeah. So I'm, I'm worried about that. But I think Vegas pegged it pretty good at nine and a half. It's just going to come down to injuries, which is always the number one predictor. So that's right. Last thing, Isaac, before I get you out of here, just out of curiosity, I have not studied UNC at all. And I know how much you just love UNC football. <laughs> What's your over under on their win total? Ooh. I haven't even looked at their schedule, honestly. Yeah, here's the thing, Brian. I I am not optimistic um, in a similar like these past four years with Sam Howell and Drake May at the helm. It's covered up what probably would have been three win teams otherwise. You know, uh, these past two years under Drake May, they've gotten off to these hot starts and tanked down the stretch as injuries to your great point about Florida state have kind of caught up and the defense has been more and more exposed and uh, blueprints have been established of how to attack the team. Now that you don't have a Sam Howell or a Drake may to cover up those kind of things. Um, I'm, I'm not confident in what in the quarterback position. Um, so I think a lot is going to be dependent on the, oddly enough, the defense to, find a new leaf to turn over under Jeff Collins, um, which that is terrifying to me, but you know, obviously, um, gosh, I just, I mean, 
so basically you're looking at either Connor Harrell, who was a backup last year, or Max Johnson, who came over from a and uh, They're going to battle it out to be the starter. I think Max Johnson probably is going to win the job, and I think he will be a serviceable quarterback. I don't think he will be Sam Howell or Drake May, but I think he will do a good job. He's got some returning skills guys around him. Amarion Hampton probably is one of the best running backs in the nation this year, so you can rely yeah. on that. That's a helpful thing. And then you've got still a really good tight end room, including his own brother. You know, So <laughs> there's some of that. Jake Johnson coming in, obviously. Um, but you do get some guys back on defense. Cayman Rucker, I think, should be one of the best ends in the nation, but just had surgery on a finger this week. So, uh, you know, so we, we wait to see on some of that and just how, um, Jeff Collins is the new DC kind of works in as you're also working in a brand new quarterback. So we'll see, Brian, I am not overly hopeful. I think you can get to a bowl game, but, but not a great one. Six and six yep. is expected eight and four would overachieve. I would, I would 100 take, give me eight and four and they're dancing in the streets in Chapel Hill. Okay. That's we're pretty much on the same page. I think this will be the last year for Mac. That's my opinion. I, it's got, if not, I, I mean, it's got to be getting close. Yeah. What is he? 72? Yeah. <laughs> it's 73? up there, man. Um, yeah. He's, I mean, he's, he's been a really legendary coach and he, he's the guy yeah. that, yeah, he's the guy that's turned it around for them yep. now twice, yep. but like, I think they're losing out on recruits because of his Because team. even though, even though he's saying, I'm here, I'm good. Eventually, guy. Even I don't care what he's saying. Guys are gonna say, "Yeah, but I, you're 72. Like, what do you want? What do you want?" Yeah, they had to run him out of Texas. Yep, he won't retire. Is my concern, and he makes it muddy. Yeah, and then Bubba I, Cunningham has to step in and have awkward conversation. Yeah. Oof, I, oof, that's rough. Yeah. So hopefully, he'll have the self awareness to step away when he needs to. Isaac also, Shade, I thank you very much. Where can everybody find your work, sir? Uh, as we've talked about locked on Tar Heels, locked on college basketball. Those are my shows right now. College basketball. We're just talking about Kentucky head coaching search every day. It's great. Um, uh, but I'm most I'm active sure. on Twitter. And so that's where you can find me kind of keeping up with stuff. And now that the NCAA tournament's over, I'm going to go sleep a little bit. <laughs> All right, Isaac. I appreciate it, man. Stay with me. Everybody, please like, and subscribe to the podcast. And we will catch you again very soon on locked on Seminoles.